Hey, this video was made just for you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Today we will learn about the third chapter in science for standard 9 that is current electricity. In this chapter we will learn about potential and potential difference, conductors and insulators, electrical resistance and Ohm's law and connection of resistors and effective resistance. All around us Electricity is of utmost importance in the modern world. It means that electricity is very important in our world. We depend on it for almost everything in our day-to-day -day life. In order to avoid the inconvenience faced due to failure of power supply, hospitals, banks, offices and private institutions make alternative arrangements with the help of generators. Electricity is so important and necessary for everyday things around us that big companies and hospitals, banks, offices, all of them, they keep a backup that is in the form of generators. That if electricity is not available, generators will be able to produce that electricity. That is why we cannot live without electricity. Electricity is used for running electrical furnaces, electric motors and several other instruments used in industries. So electricity is practically used in almost everything important around us. Domestic appliances like the fridge, electric oven, mixer, fans, washing machines, vacuum cleaner, roti maker, etc. have helped us by saving time and labor. So if you look around you in your own house, you will find many appliances that use electricity. And this has helped us save a lot of time as well as labor, that is work. Like for example, washing machine and vacuum cleaner. If you use these by using electricity, it will get the job done faster. That's how it is saving time and it requires less efforts. That's how it is saving on labor. All these devices cannot be done without electricity. Not only human beings but some animals also use electricity. For example, fishes such as the eels use electricity to catch their prey and also for self-defense. Eels are a certain kind of fish that have electricity produced by their body and it is used by them to catch their food and also for self-defense to protect them from other bigger fishes. The lightning that strikes the earth is an excellent example of natural flow of electricity. So, you must have noticed lightning that hits the surface of the earth. This is a natural way of electricity. What if we could collect and store this electricity? It would be so wonderful because lightning has tremendous amounts of electricity in it. Can you recall, you must have seen a waterfall. Which way does the water flow? So, the water flows towards gravity. So, it will flow from the upward to the downward direction. For the generation of electricity, water is released from a dam at a higher level and because of gravity, it falls to a lower level. So, how do we produce electricity in our day-to-day -day life? There are dams which are made and these dams store water on a certain level. And once the dam is open, all the water flows and falls downwards because of gravity. Thus, as we know, the direction of flow of water between two points depends on the level of the two points. Now we will study about potential and potential difference. Try this. The equi equipment required would be two plastic bottles, a rubber tube, clamp and some water. So let us do this experiment. So set up the experiment as shown in this figure 3.1. Then remove the clamp from the rubber tube. Note your observations and answer the following questions. So in this experiment, we take two plastic bottles of equal dimensions and we place one plastic bottle on a certain height as compared to the other plastic bottle. And we connect these two plastic bottles using a rubber tube. And we will fill water up in both the plastic bottles but we'll make sure that none, none of the water can travel between the rubber tube by using this clamp here. Okay, 
So the first question asks what happens when the clamp is removed. So when you remove the clamp you will notice that water from the plastic bottle that is on the on a height will move to in the rubber tube and go into the plastic bottle that is at a lower level. Does the water stop flowing? Why? So but you will notice that after a certain time the water will stop flowing. And why does this happen is because that after a certain while once the level of water is on the same level then that is when the water will stop flowing. What will you do to keep the water flowing for a longer duration? So if you want the water for to flow for a longer duration then you will have to increase the height of this bottle. So now instead of placing it at this level you will have to place at a higher level. That will ensure that the water will flow for a longer duration. Just like water, the flow of electricity, electric charge between two points depends on a kind of electric level at those points. So how the pattern at which this water is flowing, similar pattern is what electric charge flows in. In that also, it depends on how much water is there in both the jars. Therefore, for electric, electric charge, the flow will depend on the electric level between the, both the points. This level is called as the electric potential. A positive charge flows from a point of higher potential to a point of lower potential. So, this is very important. They are telling us that if the charge is positive, it will flow from higher potential to lower potential. We have seen earlier that electricity flows due to the conduction of negatively charged electrons. So electricity is nothing but the flow of negatively charged electrons. Electrons flow from the point of lower potential to a point of higher potential. Because electrons have negative charge, their flow will be opposite of the positive charge. Since we learned that positive charge flows from higher to lower, Electrons which have negative charge will flow from lower to higher. A lightning strike is the flow of electrons from a point of lower or negative potential which is will be present in the clouds to the point of higher or zero potential on the earth. So the clouds have very low potential that is in negative value and the earth has zero potential and because zero is greater than any negative value the electrons present in the lightning will strike from the clouds towards the surface of the earth. We shall study the definition of electric potentials in higher standards. So the exact definition we will learn later. Now we just know the basic examples. The difference between the values of potentials at two points A and B is called the potential difference between them. In the figure, conductor A is at a higher potential than conductor B. So here in this figure, they have given us two conductors A and B. And here A has positive charge and B has a negative charge. Therefore, A has a higher potential than the conductor B. When these two are connected by a conducting wire, a potential difference is created between its two ends and electrons will flow from B to A through the wire. So here they have con uh, connected this wire between the two conductors A and B. And once you connect the wire, the electrons will start flowing. So as we had learned earlier, electrons will flow from low potential to high potential. So therefore, since conductor B has a lower potential, the electrons will move in this direction. This flow will continue until the two conductors A and B have the same potential. That is, until their potential difference becomes zero. So the electrons will continue to keep moving until both the conductors have equal potential or the potential difference that is when you subtract the potential of both of them it comes to zero that means both of them have equal potential only then will the flow of electrons to work has to be done against the electric field to take a positive charge from a point of lower potential to a point of higher potential because the natural flow of a pot 
positive charge will be from higher potential to lower potential. But if we have to take the positive charge in the opposite direction, that is from lower to higher, then a work has to be done against the electric field. Now let us study about the potential difference of a cell. The difference in potential between the positive and negative terminals of a cell is the potential difference of that cell. This potential difference is caused by chemical reactions occurring inside the cell. A cell has different chemicals inside them which react with each other and that causes the potential difference to be formed. The potential difference sets the electrons in motion and results in the flow of electricity through a conducting wire connected to the two ends of a cell. So once the cell is put in anything, any device, there are wires in that device that are connected to either sides of the cell. So once the circuit is complete, electrons flow through the circuit and a potential difference is formed and that is what causes the flow of electricity. The amount of work done to carry a unit positive charge from point A to point B is called the electric potential difference between the two points. So here the potential difference between the two points is said to be work done upon the total charge transferred. So here we take the potential difference as V, the work done is W and the total charge transferred is Q. So therefore we get the uh, formula of V is equal to W upon Q. 1V will be equal to 1J upon 1C where this 1J is 1 joule and this 1C is 1 coulomb and the unit of potential difference in SI system is volt. So the potential difference is V that is volt and work done we know is joule and total charge transferred will be C that is coulomb. So here they have shown us a single atom. In a single atom we know there is a nucleus in the center and it is surrounded by electrons. And when atoms are placed next to each other, usually the outermost electrons are weakly attached. So therefore they can move from one atom to the other atom. When atoms are present in a conducting solid, the free electrons move freely from atom to atom. So in a conducting solid, there are many atoms which are very close to each other and their outer electrons are very loosely attached. So they can easily jump from one atom to the other atom and that is how the free electrons move. An introduction to scientists. The Italian scientist Alessandro Volta constructed the first electric cell. So he was responsible to make the first electric cell. Therefore, the unit of potential difference is named after him, that is volt. So this is what the cell looked like. It is very big as comparison to today's cells which are very tiny. Do you know very small values of potential difference are expressed in the following units? 1 millivolt and 1 microvolt. So when you put mini in front of any unit, it is 10 raised to minus 3. And 1 microvolt, that is micro, would be 10 raised to minus 6. Similarly, large values of potential difference are expressed in the following units. So here, 1 kilovolt and 1 megavolt. So when you put kilo in front of the unit, it is 10 raised to plus 3. And mega would be 10 raised to plus 6. The next topic is free electrons. Every atom of a metallic conductor has one or more outermost electrons which are weakly bound to the nucleus. So usually metals have outermost electrons that are weakly attached to the nucleus. These are called as free electrons because they can freely move and either leave the atom or join it. As shown in the following figure, these electrons can easily move from one part of a conductor to its other parts. The negative charge of the electrons also gets transferred as a result of this motion. The free electrons in a conductor are the carriers of the negative charge. So, 
as the electrons are moving from one atom to another atom it will also take their negative charge from that atom to the other atom current flowing through a wire as shown in the figure if a conducting wire is not connected to a cell its free electrons move randomly in all directions in the space between the atoms so here they have shown us a random motion of electrons in the wire so as long as this wire is not connected to a cell all the electrons are moving in random directions in the in the wire when we connect the ends of the wire to the two terminals of a cell and we complete the circuit then the electric force acts on the electrons being negatively charged they will start moving from negative that is lower potential to a positive or higher potential terminal of the cell so here they have shown us after the wire is connected to a cell so usually when we draw a circuit we use this symbol to signify an electric cell and this side shows that this is the positive side and this is the negative side of the cell so now electric charge will be moving in this circuit and the electrons will move in this direction that is it will be moving from the positive to the negative direction and now they are not in random motion but all of them will move in a streamline motion due to the flow of these electrons current starts flowing through the wire this motion of electrons is irregular but there is a definite non zero value to their average velocity for the answers to this exercise and other free worksheets please go to jkacademypro.com